When Dr. Davis came and told me about her interest in cell phones uh, and cancer, I said, look, this can't happen. You, cell phones put out microwave signals, microwaves just like you use in your microwave oven, and these are relatively low energy. They are relatively, actually, even though it's called micro, it's actually a relatively long wavelength, and it's much bigger than any atom or molecule in the human body. And what it does is it warms things, primarily. And so how is that going to cause cancer? And as I talked and I thought about what she was saying, I mean, Dr. Davis said, you know, she had exactly, I had exactly the same thought when, you, when I first heard about this idea. And I, um, and I thought about what she was saying, and I thought about Jon Snow. Because if you think about it, he was dealing with an invisible threat, like the signals from a cell phone. He was dealing with a, um, he was suggesting a relationship between exposure and disease that defied the existing science. I mean, the people who are most vehemently, uh, vehe most of the people most vehement in, in saying this can't cause this are the people who study biophysics and say there's no way that that wavelength of, of electromagnetic field is going to cause cancer. So, um, I decided I had to do a little like Jon Snow and listen more carefully. This is uh, just from a, a paper that actually hasn't even come out yet. It's about to come out. And this is what it, if, you, if an 11-year-old holds a cell phone to his ear, this is the way the radiation penetrates into his brain. And maybe it's causing nothing. I mean. You know, it's penetrating to a brain. Is that are those microwaves doing anything? Well, we don't know. But clearly, there's no question that the microwaves from a cell phone penetrate into the head of a of anybody that's using it. This is a study where they took cell phones and they put the cell phones up to the head of a subject that they were studying, and they looked at the metabolism of glucose in the brains. So these red areas indicate elevated rates of glucose metabolism. This is somebody with the cell phone on. They're not talking on the cell phone. It's just turned on, and it's just producing a, the cell phone signal. And this is um, with the cell phone off. And you can see that there's an increase in metabolism of glucose in the brain. What's going on? I mean. The person, the subject had no way of knowing that phone was on or off. So um, somehow that, cell, that radiation is affecting the action of cells in the brain. This radiation can get into the brain, it can affect the brain. There's evidence that it increases the um, rate at which uh, fluids leak out of the blood vessels in the brain. It opens up the blood and brain barrier. And the World Health Organization in 2011 decided to classify cell phone radiation as a possible human carcinogen. Now, that um, doesn't mean that it's definitely a human carcinogen. It, the word is possible. Um, but this is based on a whole series of studies, primarily on a series of epidemiologic studies that were conducted that showed a relationship between brain cancer and heavy use of cell phones. There's, there's a fair amount of controversy over this, but there's definitely some positive evidence. Another, another area where people have looked at cell phones is if you, know, you carry that cell phone around in your pocket and it's producing all this radiation. Um, it, you know, could it affect the development of sperm? And that's been studied in a number of ways. Um, a couple of studies I'll show here. One was a study where they looked at cell phones, they took sperm and they exposed it to cell phone radiation. And they found that the, um, if you look here, the cell, the, the sperm that was exposed uh, the, had far fewer viable sperm in it far fewer motile sperm in it, and far more damaged sperm. 
uh, in the vicinity of that cell phone. The other thing that's ha the, the, the way it's been studied, people have looked at the sperm counts of men and classified them based on how heavily they used their cell phones. And there appears to be a dose-response relationship between how heavily you use your phone and the um, sperm counts of men. Now, could this be explained by something else? I mean, could it just be that men that you heavily use cell phones are also high stress, they have other exposures? Yes, I mean, you, you know, it, it's very hard to prove these things absolutely, but there's, again, evidence that we, there may be issues related to the viability of sperm exposed to cell phones. There's, other, there's a whole raft of other studies. There's hundreds of studies that have been conducted looking at the relationship between cell phones and, and health. Um, some positive, some negative, but, and there's definitely controversy over this, but there's enough smoke to, be, to have some concern that there might be a fire. 